What can you tell us about this investigation? Are you presently the subject of one? I haven't I haven't heard anything about it uh, so far. Again, I've been focused on my race, mm -hmm. but I will tell you, I follow all the ethics rules and all of our ethics guidelines. Well, that didn't sound too convincing to me. I was glad that Laura Coates from CNN asked MAGA Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace that question. And look, when you go full MAGA, that's what happens. That's what you embrace. To watch MAGA Republican Nancy Mace's transformation as her district consolidated uh, into a far more MAGA uh, demographic based on uh, serious racist gerrymandering taking place in South Carolina, which, by the way, was recently affirmed by the United States Supreme Court, even though it was struck down by a three panel uh, district court or a three judge panel district court decision, which said it was a racist gerrymander. She's leaned in and gone full MAGA. Let me just show you that f the, the longer portion of that interview where Laura Coates asks MAGA Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace about that uh, investigation, and you'll see how she fumbles. Watch this, and it's a broader, important discussion we got to have together. So watch this. There was a, I'm sure you've seen the New York Times report or mm -hmm. discussion talking about re records that were reviewed mm -hmm. that suggests that there is, um, that you own a townhouse in Washington. The records that were reviewed mm -hmm. seem to suggest that you repaid twenty three thousand plus dollars in lodging costs. That that includes expenses for insurance and taxes, mm -hmm. and also months' bills for the townhouse. There is um, a discussion whether an ethics probe is warranted based mm -hmm. on the repayment or reimbursement of, of those fees that would be tied to home ownership. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about this investigation? Are you presently the subject of one? I haven't I haven't heard anything about it uh, so far. Again, I've been focused on my race, mm -hmm. but I will tell you, I follow all the ethics rules and all of our ethics guidelines. I'm one of about 300 members of Congress that rely on lodging per diem to help us live in DC to do our jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing is, this was a last minute Hail Mary hit job done the weekend before our primary on Tuesday. And it was very clear the voters saw it for what it was and decided it wasn't it wasn't truthful and that I follow all the ethics rules. Mm -hmm. And they voted overwhelmingly despite all of the lies, despite all of the negative ads and voted overwhelmingly in favor of us. We won by 30 points last night. That so much you would be open to having and being very open with the investigation. Oh, absolutely. If there is one. There's no reason not to. Absolutely. And this is the first time up until last year, members of Congress, Congress didn't get a per diem for travel mm -hmm. expenses to uh, to Washington DC so if there's confusion mm -hmm. let's clear it up because sure. there are hundreds of members that that either rent places up here or own property up here and live in it that sort of thing I'm sure everyone would welcome that well I'll certainly hold you to your yeah. word about making sure that you're open and accountable mm -hmm. to the people and of course by the same standards of Congress as well so you all remember the kind of full MAGA transformation of Nancy Mace where Donald Trump had previously endorsed uh, back in 2022 uh, the uh, com the opponent of Nancy Mace, and Nancy Mace then went in front of Trump Tower um, and pretended that Trump had endorsed her, and you know, and she said, "Look how great he is." You know, she just made like an utter fool of herself in front of Trump Tower. Here, watch what she had to do, and watch. This is kind of the humiliation ritual that Donald Trump puts you through. Here, play this clip. Hey everyone, Congresswoman Nancy Mace here. I, I'm in front of Trump Tower today. And um, I remember in 2015 when President Trump announced his run. I was one of his earliest supporters. I actually worked for the campaign in 2016. I worked in seven different states across the country to help get him elected. I supported him again in 2020 because of policies I believed in. He brought American jobs back, he lowered our taxes, wages and employment were better for every hardworking American in our country. He made America safer and he took on China directly. And America was stronger all around the world. And, and quite frankly, freedom and democracy was stronger all around the world. And these are things I still believe in today, policies I, I believe in and continue to. As a strong fiscal conservative, I believe in putting America first. I believe in putting our country back on the path to prosperity. But Nancy Pelosi would love nothing more than to win this seat back in a midterm election cycle. She did it in 18, and she can do it again uh, this cycle. 
and I was elected to represent the people of the first district. I won the seat back for Republicans in 2020. And if you want a Republican majority, if you to thwart the radical far left DC Democrat agenda, then we've got to keep the seat in Republican hands. We've got to get a majority back. If you want to lose this seat once again in midterm election cycle to Democrats, then my opponent is more than qualified to do just that. If you want a Republican majority, if you want someone to continue to represent the low country, if you want someone to represent the low country with our fiscally conservative values, then I'm here to serve. And then, of course, her video in front of Trump Tower backfired because then in March 2022, a month after she made that video, Donald Trump gave a speech in South Carolina where he mocked her. Here, play this clip. Different candidate. She went to New York and stood in front of the magnificent Trump Tower. Has anyone ever heard of Trump Tower? And did a commercial insinuating that I was endorsing her. She's standing over in front of Trump Tower in New York. I'm saying, can you believe this? It was untruthful, just like everything else she does. Thankfully, this June, you have the chance to dump these grandstanding losers and replace them with two rock solid America first champions. But then she had to go full MAGA, right? And so part of going full MAGA is um, you know, you got to be totally inappropriate at prayer breakfast. You got to make a mockery of the religion that you uh, purport to espouse. You have to show what a hypocrite you are, right? So um, she goes to this prayer breakfast, uh, you know, when she uh, gets reelected after 2022, just squeaks by. She goes to this prayer breakfast and the first thing she talks about is uh, having sex with her uh, boyfriend or fiance before marriage and letting people know at the prayer breakfast um, about her sex life. Play this clip. On this together, another year, another standing room only event. And when I woke up this morning at seven, I, I was getting picked up at 745. Patrick, my fiance, tried to pull me by my waist over this morning in bed. And I was like, no, baby, we don't got time for that this morning. Uh, I got to get to the prayer breakfast and I got to be on time and a little TMI. But um, I, I he'll, he can wait. He's got we got I'll see him later tonight. Um, but I was here early. And then, you know, that's part of the whole MAGA thing, right? So then we learn about how her and her entrepreneur fiance uh, split after 18 months, who she talked about in that video. And then her staff started quitting her office as she's accused of discussing her sex life with AIDS. Um, she often openly discussed her sex life in the office, including in front of male junior staffers, according to three sources who talked to Daily Mail. She frequently made sexual references in the office and discussed things that were not appropriate in a work environment. If one of her staff members were to officially complain about her conduct, she could be subjected to an ethics investigation. Um, so there's that. Um, then, uh, of course, remember during all the kind of various uh, uh, removal of Kevin McCarthy and all that, um, you know, she would wear this like scarlet letter S and um, she would accuse Kevin McCarthy and other Republicans of uh, treating her inappropriately. So she wore the scarlet letter S and said that there's no place for her in the Republican Party with Kevin McCarthy leading it here. Play this clip. I'm wearing the scarlet letter after the week that I just had last week, being a woman up here and being demonized for my vote and for my voice. I'm here to let the rest of the world know and the country know I'm on the side of the people. I'm not on the side of the establishment. And I'm going to do the right thing every single time, no matter the consequences, because I don't answer to anybody in D.C. I don't answer anyone in Washington. I only answer to the people. Right. So it has all the kind of trademarks of of MAGA and you see her transformation um, uh, kind of becoming complete um, here. For example, she refuses to denounce. This was back in October of 2023. She refuses to denounce uh, MAGA Republican Jim Jordan for his alleged involvement in the cover up of sexual abuse of dozens of student athletes at Ohio State. And so she pretends to be an advocate for victims. And then here's what she says, play this clip. I know you've been outspoken about um, defending victims of sexual assault through the past allegations against Jim Jordan, mm -hmm. that he turned a blind eye to sexual abuse. Give you any reservations? 
I, yeah, I'm not a familiar or that? aware with that. I, he's not indicted on anything that I'm aware of. And so I don't, I don't know anything and can't speak to that, but I will it's say the Ohio that State I have been, University as you said, Margaret, a very, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything and I, I don't know anything about that. What I do know is that I've been a very strong voice for women. I've and then when they were holding those Hunter Biden uh, contempt hearings in the House of Representatives, she stood up of all people and yelled at him that he's the epitome of white privilege and that he has no balls. But, you know, she's auditioning. She's performing for Donald Trump here. Here, play this clip. Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman Comer, um, first of all, my first question is who brought Hunter Biden to be here today? That's my first question. Um, second question, you are the epitome of white privilege coming into the oversight committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here and- Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman, um, if the, the lady if, if, if the general lady wants speaking. to hear from Hunter Biden, we can hear from him right now, Mr. And Chairman. Let's take a vote and hear from I'm Hunter speaking. Biden. What are, are you afraid of? To speak? Hold on, are you hold on, hold on. Why, order, why order, are order. Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Because you keep interrupting me. I, I'll interrupt the you chairman. Keep interrupting. I don't know that he's a lady. I think that uh, that Hunter Biden should be arrested right here, right now, and go straight to jail. Our nation is founded on the rule of come law. Come on, come on. And the premise come that on. the law applies to each then back to that CNN interview where she was confronted with Laura Coates over this, you know, ethics investigation that she saw or potential uh, other investigations into, you know, what seems to be some some serious misconduct. One of the things she talks about on this interview is she brags about her kind of civil rights credentials in South Carolina. Well, you eliminated the civil rights subcommittee. And let me just show you a little bit here of the shot and then the AOC chaser. Play this clip. I have the words. Look, I work on a little, lot of civil rights issues. Mm -hmm. I was the ranking member on the civil rights subcommittee last session on oversight. Uh, due process is a really important issue. Sure. But when we it was very beautiful speech uh, by the gentle lady um, who, as she mentioned, was uh, helped lead on the majority, the now majority side, uh, the civil rights and civil liberties su subcommittee. But I think it's so exemplary of the point that she also oversaw the elimination of the civil rights subcommittee on this committee, which really kind of gives the whole game away. We show up, we give speeches, we give flowery words, but at the end of the day, participate in the structural erosion of the rights and representation of people uh, that, that are marginalized, women, people of color, people that just need to see their due process and civil liberties protected in this country. But I will move on. And then of course, going full MAGA here as well, during that interview with Laura Coates, Laura Coates is asking, uh, MAGA Republican Nancy Mace, like, wh where are you getting some of this data about President Biden that's all false? And then uh, Nancy Mace blames the FBI rather than their own investigation and says, oh, it's the FBI's fault that we got these 1023 forms that turned out to actually be from spies from Russia and China, that we relied on the agents from China and Russia. It's not our fault as the MAGA Republicans. We were misled by the FBI who they want to defund. Here, play this clip. No, it's not the motivation, but when you hear that the transcript might not match the audio tapes, you'd want to verify that information and requesting the audio tapes is not an unusual thing. But where is that coming from? I haven't heard that there is a discrepancy between what was said. Mm -hmm. It wasn't favorable by the special counsel, Robert right. Kerr, about no, Biden. No, not at all. So where is, the, where is it coming from if there is a discrepancy between what was said and how it's said? Well, let me take, for example, oversight last year. We had this 1023 document. The mm -hmm. FBI said that the witness was, was trustworthy, incredible, six months later says that they're not trustworthy, incredible. So being able to mm -hmm. verify the information, being able to verify the transcript is something we should be doing to make sure the information we are getting is truthful. So look, I think it's important that we show you that, um, you know, full history right there and, you know, judge for yourself. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Enough! Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.